person threw a firebomb inside the premises and immediately fled. Footage on social media shows staff rushing to put the flames out while patrons were inside. Officers at Shankill Gartha Station are appealing for witnesses or anyone with famer- camera footage from Lachlanstown Drive to get in touch. An investigation has been launched after a man died in Drumshambo in County Leitrim. Gartha were called to the scene in the town after reports that a person had collapsed. Officers discovered a man in his 50s he was pronounced dead a short time later. The scene was sealed off for further examination and remains closed to the public this afternoon. It's two minutes past four. News talk weather. Thanks to Ryanair. Father's Day is on the way. Swap the socks for a Ryanair gift card. Bright and breezy this afternoon with sunny spells, highs of 17 or 18 degrees. Now you're up to date on News Talk. Football on Off the Ball. With Sky. All the football you love in one place. Across Sky Sports, BT Sport, and Premier Sports. Andrew, welcome back to Off the Ball on News Talk for your Sunday afternoon. John Duggan sitting in for John Malloy until seven. All the way until five now, we're going to talk about football, the Nations League, and a few other matters that are bubbling in the transfer market with uh, Gavin Comiskey of the Irish Times, a football correspondent. He's in studio with me. Gavin, how's the form? Oh, very well. Thanks. How are you? Not too bad, Gavin. Did you enjoy Armenia and Vuj? Uh Yes, I did. Yeah, great cities. Um, Especially Yerevan. Uh, oh, every city I've been to in the last year with the football teams, men or women, you're reminded just how bad a state and numb, how desperate Dublin needs to be pedestrianised and spruced up and just basic stuff. You see, you keep seeing it. But football-wise, yeah. Yerevan wasn't great, obviously. But, no, it um, wasn't. What's your takeaway, if you excuse that um, digital journalism pun, on the um, on the four games? Yeah, uh, take my temperature after losing 1-0 at home to Ukraine and it was very different from the end. my opinion after the Scottish game even which was fantastic and then my opinion would have changed quite drastically when Obafemi went off injured because you're like oh okay we're not going to get to see if that was real or not in another game and I think it is I think it will be but he's just very injury prone that was a worry but the bravery of the UK Ukraine performance, I don't know how it came across as TV, but in the stadium, like Josh Cullen embodied everything you ever want to see from a Republic of Ireland international uh, in particular. Never mind Nathan Collins coming of age and being the player that a lot of people have been promising he will be with that sensational goal. Um, I thought what was very interesting was almost to a man, the management and players after the game were desperately disappointed that they didn't win that. More so the case because they knew they can't win the Nations League group now because they didn't get the six points. They only got four points from four games, which when you do a Liam Brady on it and pull away and look at it, it's 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 really poor, you know. But when you watch the Scotland game and you, you just go with your eye test and go with your gut of watching... So there's 20- a fact versus emotion. Uh, no, it's just we're watching 2021-year-olds 20, coming through in a right. team. I and mean, they're coming through as a glut. And there's six, seven of them. Like, we didn't even have Ida and Omar Delhi in this window. So when we get them all together and if... If, if if Paris and Obafemi isn't a mirage if it's really real Paris playing off him like that and the two of them interchanging like they did for 90 minutes they've never played together at underage I think they were like ships in the night one for yeah. the other at under 21s if we could get the, if that's real and if Kenny has sw- if Stephen Kenny's formation has swapped again and it is going to be uh, Josh Cullen sitting there with two number eights in front of him which really worked in the last two games really effective of getting balls forward um, and we get everyone on the pitch Matardi on the pitch. They they move past a cur- certain really good stalwarts like with Shane Duffy, Seamus Coleman. Like if their positions aren't under real pressure in September, we're not we're not making a leap forward. Okay, you know what I mean. We're also joined on the line by the UEFA Pro Licence Coach Shane Keegan. Shane, how are you? John, how are you getting on? Well, good. Uh, Josh Cullen is a warrior. I, I always would have associated Josh Cullen with being tidy. So it was interesting to see what Gavin saw firsthand on uh, during the week. Yeah, I don't think he shies away from that side of the game either, John. His his use of the ball is excellent. Look, he's he's I'll be honest with you, he's I'd have a, a bit of a punch on for all midfielders anyway. I, I like the no nonsense style that they tend to, to usually uh, have about them and look he's fast become my favourite player in that Irish team, to be honest with you, John. I I think Look, it might sound a bit strong, but I, I think he's the best centre midfielder we've had since Roy, to be honest with you. Um I think his all round game is is brilliant. Um as a manager you know, as a manager, when your centre halves have the ball, they need to look up and see who they're going to play the ball into. And in certain incidents, in, in certain situations, you're looking at and you're going, yeah, give it to him. Or in other situations, you're saying, no, 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 it's a bit too tight there. 
I can't see any situation where she wouldn't be sent to her centre half yet give the ball to Josh Cullen because I think he can mind it all day long I think he protects it so so well uses it so well um, and as Gavin has just said is absolutely not afraid of the other side of the game when it needs to be done as well um, he's a hardy little boy so he is and I, I think he's I think he's an outstanding player for us I think he's going to be the uh, the kind of the centrepiece of that team hopefully fingers crossed all going well for, for the next five, six, seven years It's the way he uh uh, especially in uh, Poland, in that midfield battle, when the referee put his whistle in his pocket and he went in, uh, I can't remember his name, the number eight, I think it was, for, for Ukraine. They went into a 50-50 ball and he nearly dislodged his hip, you know, and right. he was a much, much bigger man, much stronger man. You saw it the same with Co- Connor Coventry at 21's level against um, Montenegro as well. You could see it that he's the same, but that's a different, that's a lower standard. At this level, for his size, the, you can see the... the the, the, the key in comparisons when they're similarly sized players going in against these much bigger physical players and coming out with the ball or coming out with coming out with what looked like a broken leg and then he gets up and plays on like Yarmolenko cut him in two and he just battled on and and as I says yeah he's very neat and tidy too His club future then is very important lads because there's a company say on a Burnley uh, where Nathan Collins is and all of these players have big moves to make. We'll talk about Gavin Bazunu in a bit, but Nathan Collins is a move to make if he's go- or is going to stay at Burnley. That is also a move in itself. Um, Josh Cullen might have a move to make, or does he stay in Anderlecht and play first-team football? Um, Jason Nige is another one that you'd have to think might be looking for uh, pastures away from Derby County. Uh, what does Cueving Callagher do? So Josh Cullen himself, do you think Vincent Company is going to unsettle him, his departure? Because they seem to gel well. Shane? Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens, John. I, I, obviously enough, I'm sure we all would. I'd love to see him get a get a get a season in a in a Premier League side. I think he's he's good enough, um, easily good enough to go into a, a Premier League. Let's say certainly bottom half of the table team and and nail down a position in that kind of whole midfield. And I I think that would bring him along in leaps and bounds. I mean, we've got our what looks to me got our dream move in terms of Bazuna in that he looks like he's potentially going to be a, a starting goalkeeper in, in the Premier League. I think something similar for Josh Cullen would be would be fantastic. Look on on your broader point, John, like it's it's a huge, huge summer for Irish international players because so, so many of them um are either on, you know, looking for new clubs, potentially looking for new clubs, looking at their club situation and saying, Oh, I don't know how many minutes I have next season if I stay where I am at the moment. Um, you go through the squad or the most regularly used, let's say, sixteen to eighteen players, and there's very, very, very few of them, John, that you could say, yeah. Well, he's perfectly happy where he is and he is likely to be a regular starter next season at the club that he's at. So, I mean, from that point of view, it's 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 so important this summer that so many of these guys end up at, at clubs where they where they are going to see minutes because even the fellas, like Gavin is 100% right. You look at, let's say, take the turnover in, like, I suppose my biggest take home from these group of games now, John, is the strength and depth because we really have two players now essentially battling for every position on the field which is exactly the situation you want to be in and, and very little between the options and the best example being the battery that would have you know what we would have seen is our first choice battery going into the start of this Coleman right Egan left Duffy middle are now all under severe severe pressure for their positions from Collins uh, Darrow Shea and who am I missing out there oh, who all did re- Oh, my bad, he's still to come back. It's O'Shea um, against Egan, but, Shane, isn't it? For well, the left. interesting one, yeah, yeah, it probably is. And the most interesting one, Gavin, probably is the whole Nathan Collins situation now in that, you know, he was very steady at right of the tree, but obviously he's gone out and been outstanding then in the middle of the tree. And Duffy has his detractors, but... I, I still like him, Gavin. I, I think he offers us so much. Uh, you know, I think he is a leader. I think his set-piece threat is incredible, absolutely incredible. No team seems to, to be able to, to know how to deal with it. So, you know, do they now find themselves back playing together or is it a case of Duffy losing out to Collins? But I suppose what led me to bring that up, um, John, is like Duffy, where where is he at at the moment in terms of Premier League minutes next year? Seamus Coleman, yeah. for all the praise Lampard yeah. gave him, where is he at in terms of minutes? Jeff Hendrick, you know, so you go right through this squad and uh, it's 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 a really, really important time for so many of these players. I think uh, Duffy's inability to play, like the Scotland game could have gone so badly wrong if McGinn had taken the two chances that Duffy handed to him on a plate. One of them he hit quite close to Keller and the other one he put wide, the Aston Villa midfielder. 
And that was just down to Duffy's inability to play the ball out from defence. Because was, that's the system I, that we want. And then we're talking about one I, point from four games, you know, and it's it's real problems. And it's it's huge pressure before Kenny's even started his new two-year deal. Um, so, like, that's how fine the margins are, hey, to use the cliche. cliche. But, but again, exa- exact, to use your phrase, Gavin, in terms of how fine the margins are, and, and you're right, you, you are right, but just to put it into context, I'm not, I'm not, I don't intend to go to war for Shane Duffy here, but this is Shane case. Duffy... <laughs> Shane Duffy finished the Scotland game with the highest pass completion rate on the pitch. He has 55 from 57, John. The problem is the two, the only two passes that didn't go where they were supposed to go, both should have ended up in the back of the net. And that kind of sums up almost the the whole Shane Duffy equation, doesn't it? His strengths are, are so big, but just those, you do have those question marks over those little lapses. I think, to be honest with you, John, I think the problem is he has it in his head that people think he can't play and therefore he tries to overdo it and he tries to play when it's actually not on to play. He's so he, he's so kind of determined to show people he can play football almost that he's, he's kind of pushing it a bit too much and, and trying it maybe at times when it's not on. But is he maybe a guy that needs to play in a four? Well, that's not going to happen. So do you think this happen. opens up another debate. Like, do you... Uh, so Hamden Park, Ireland need a result in Hamden Park in September to justify everything that's come before to stop people going on about Kenny's results record. It just has to happen. So that means Stephen Kenny, the, the focus comes on the Ireland manager about his selection, which has been inconsistent, which he's made... He's made big decisions on journeyman pros from lower leagues in England that have not worked out. Hamilton, Hogan, you know, we can... There's a couple more. So he needs to get his back... To the whole... Okay, Cullen's going to be in front of him. He's probably going to play with two eights in front of that. So he needs to get his back three right for that game. So do you... you it looks like we should build it around Nathan Collins in the middle. John Egan would be very hard to leave John Egan out of a team, even if Dario O'Shea's flying. Um, and then does Obama Deli come back in if he gets over that back injury? He looks so slick at right of the centre-halves and going forward. So a big decision there has to be made. And it's an enormous decision because the whole Nations League campaign that, we're, that Ireland were supposed to win... It, it depends. If they don't get a result in Hamden Park, they're not going to come second. Well, I, I, th- I think, whether we do or not, I think that the clangers have to stop. And the clangers are Luxembourg, Azerbaijan, Armenia. And maybe that's a result of the fact that this thing is going to take a long time to bet in with so, some of the young players. So you have to have a degree of stability around the personality you're using. I think it's huge that they're playing first-team football. Like, you know, Jeff Hendrick should he be playing in the middle of the park if he's not playing first-team football. He kept his place because he went and loaned to QPR. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Josh Cullen plays every week, every week for Anderlecht. Uh, Nathan Collins is playing for Burnley. I know they were relegated. Um, but players playing first-team football and playing well, like Robinson Ogbeni were the stories of of, of last autumn, last uh, going towards the winter. They had poor campaigns, you'd have to say. Yeah, yeah. So And it was now Parrish and Obafemi are the heroes. So, like, I, I think there's going to be... That's a good debate, though, John. Yeah. yeah They're yeah. not natural goal scorers. The other two are natural goal scorers. Yeah. So. It's, it's, it's going to be, uh, I think, a bit of two steps forward, one step back, but it's a case of are we maximising our execution that we can minimise these um, uncertain results that, that tend to creep in, which would cost us, I think, qualification for the Euros. Yeah, and look, John, that's that goes back probably to well before Stephen Kenny's time, to be fair, in that, as well we know, you know, it's the games where we are absolutely expected to win are the ones that we struggle most with because as a nation, we really, really struggle to create or to develop creative players. I mean, we, we you know, we, we're still in that situation again for all the for all the brightness of what came from the final two games, I'd still struggle to point to a traditional number 10 for you that I think, you know, can unlock a, a deep line in defence. Um, and I, like, I, I, you know, again, there's a lot of positivity around it, rightly so, a hell of a lot of positivity, particularly, as I say, around that strength and depth and, and in, in every area of the field. But, you know, that's probably why the change of shape, I think the change of shape has has been a huge plus as well, John. It's been a huge, huge plus. I think an awful lot of people were, were kind of calling for him to go something like this, where he, he abandons, let's say, the box four in the middle of the field and instead goes with a sitter and, and two eights and then a, a proper front two. I think it suits so many more of our, of our players so much better. It really, really does. But again, just that little... That little question mark over, okay, opposition sit out, sit back, you know, a hard breakdown. Who is our go to man that we know can prize open a, a defense for you? I'm not, you know, somebody needs to step forward and say, I'm, I am the man in that role. Kind of Jason Knight, if you know what I mean. Um, just in the fact that how Jason Knight is not in 
was not in the team's starting guaranteed nailed on in this window it, I think it was a mistake in selection by the management I think a lot of focus in September comes on the management and what they do like just maybe it's just me and Yerevan but it was screaming out for a formation change in that match when they kept catching Ireland cold on the counter attack and kept bursting out and nothing was happening up front and Hendrick's initial creativity to set up chances for Benny and Robinson kind of dried up um, I think there's going to be an enormous focus on how Keith Andrews, Stephen Kenny, and John Eustace react in game when something goes wrong in Hamden Park or something, God forbid, goes wrong at home to Armenia, who have every right to be really pissed off at the way Ireland have spoken about them since they beat them, you know. So there are going to be two big games where I think focus should come on the manager's speed of decision making when things aren't working. And like they changed 3 5 2 for the Scotland game, it worked, and the credit has to go to them for that, and the credit has to go for picking up a Femi after Kenny repeatedly saying for a year or two he's not in the squads because he's injury prone that actually also played out but I think I think an enormous focus comes on Kenny's tactical um, ability under pressure like around the 50 to 60 minute mark in these games when Ireland they're either chasing a goal or, or kind of everything's kind of stalled at nil all and that, I think that should be one of the major improvements that needs to happen from this window to the next Where do you stand on that uh, point that Gavin's making there on the decision making on the sideline Shane um, yeah look in game you could argue in game there, there, there could have been a bit more uh, it could have been slightly more proactive um, I think the key thing is that he has has made a change for the better in terms of changing the shape going forward um, look I, I, I suppose I made the point before John that you know, Stephen should have a lot of experience in the kind of situations that we face when a team drop off. Because, I mean, his his Dundalk team in the League of Ireland were so dominant that that's what he was coming up against every week. I mean, I would have been one of those opposition managers who set up with, you know, a back four and a five stretched across midfield or a back five and a narrow four in front or whatever and, and say, come on, try and, try and break us down. And, you know, he was faced with that on a very, very regular basis with Dundalk and they always seemed to find a way to get it done. And particularly what you'd find is you'd come up against Dundalk and you might still be nil all with 60, 65 minutes gone. And the next thing he would spring two or three players from the bench. And the next thing before the final whistle goes, you've been beaten two or three nil. Um, so it was something he was particularly really, really good at at, at Dundalk. And that may, he maybe hasn't quite managed to to carry that through to, to international stage yet where, you know, we're struggling to break the team down. The game is hanging in the balance and the next thing you just, you bring a guy on and, and, and it changes the whole situation. That said, I suppose the previous run of games, we had a couple, I think, was it against Belgium? He might've brought somebody on and they scored. And I think there might've been another one previous to that, but this, this run of four, particularly those first two games that didn't go well, um, I think people would have been coming away from those two all right, saying, "Look, we need we need a more you know imaginative and and kind of concrete plan B." You know, yeah, the confidence drains out of them. I think it's fair to say that probably didn't happen with his Dundalk teams, where the confidence drains out of Irish teams when they don't um, um, like the, the the first goal against Scotland. I, I can't tell you how important that was for everything that mm. this team and the, this this management has the right idea. There's a culture in the team. There's an attitude of the young players like. You can't question that they didn't perform like Irish internationals at all points throughout this window, like uh, like the standard that the fans expect, you know. But there was um, the Ukraine game, which was just desperately worrying when Troy Parrott, who proved himself a few days later against Scotland, when he wasn't used and they turned to CJ Hamilton. Like, was that cause maybe because of the Armenia game because he was ineffective in that match? Um, but just go back to the Lithuania game and go look at the benefit of bringing Troy Parrott on. I, I think to be, to be testing to see if guys like Will Keane are up to this standard now and to be looking at guys, giving Hogan a start giving Hamilton a start like, these are good honest pros you know? they're, they're good players good squad players but I just don't see why uh, like the Euros draws in October there's two more matches now in this Nations League and Ireland are still trying to figure out who you turn to just below the best players that's that's a worry now I, I keep I'm leaning into all the negatives of the first two games there is a there is a, a there's rightly a happy uh buzz and everyone's disappeared into summer off the back of just an enormously brave and, and, and like the best I had an argument with my editor about it whether it was the best goal ever scored by an Irish player and I was like not the most important like obviously Ronnie Whelan's is probably the most important or Jason McAteer's but it's easily the best goal ever scored by an Irish player and we should we should 
we should enjoy we should enjoy the glow that comes with a, a player like but him. But you, can you not understand the rationale of Will Keane scoring 26 goals in League One and Troy Parrott scoring eight goals in League One last season? Again, going back to the eye test, did you did you sit in? Well, Will Keane is a certain type of player, tall, strong, uh, old school centre forward. But if you watch Troy Parrott when he's when he's on, he is a generational player for Ireland. It's just that it's not the same. Like again, if he went over to England in the eighties or nineties, he'd be a Premier League player already. And we, he talked. He actually talked in the mix zone after uh, in Poland. He stopped with a couple of journalists. It's, it's in on the Sunday papers today. And we ran out of questions. This is a twenty or twenty. Is, is, is part twenty one yet? He's twenty twenty one. He stopped and spoke 20, to us, yeah. and had no problem taking on any questions that we had for him like that. And he, he'd spoken a couple of months ago about his change in attitude. He realised to make it at MK Dons after a few failed loan moves, you just have to uh, work harder than everyone. Because of men's football. He did call it men's football and he's very distinct about it, the importance mm. of men's football for him now. Uh, but again, I was looking through the Spurs squad. There's, he's an injury away from playing uh, over there. Unless they flood, they start buying players. And I, all I, that. Yeah, I, I, I can't it's either, it's either, yeah, I, I hear why you wouldn't. and why. But he's gone back. He's gone back to pre-season. But his next move is huge. If he's on loan again from Spurs, his next move is huge. Well, his next move is huge if he wants to keep getting Ireland caps, and it sounded like he really does. So that means you don't want to be going into League One. You want to be in the Championship is the place to be. That's what Josh Cullen should go to Burnley, especially if they keep holding Nathan Collins and he becomes the best centre half in the Championship next season. Like uh, a Burnley Norwich game, like just, just look at the, the value of that for Irish football next season. The Championship is probably in the top maybe seven leagues in the world. Yeah, Paris, uh, Jeff Hendrick, uh, Seamus Coleman, and arguably Matt Doherty. They're, they're all Premier League footballers that, um, on a sliding scale, they could all easily be out of the first team squads by September, you know what I mean? They could easily lose their places and like Doherty had a great end to last season before his injury. So there's, there's enormous pressure on them. Kenny has made it quite clear that if you do not uh, play regularly, you do not get in his team. He makes a couple of cases. He's, he's let Shane Duffy off with that one a few times and Kelleher, obviously, but it's very clear that that's going to be the policy. That's and that will that's what well, last season, to my eye, that's what drove all the loan moves. You got to play for Ireland, and that's a great thing. That it's more important, almost more important to play for Ireland than it is to get your club stuff nailed down. And what Kenny's done, and one of the mastery things he's done is he's amalgamated those two things and make them both mutually beneficial. Five three one six listeners out there, is Nathan Collins' goal the best ever Irish goal of all time? To me, meaning matters. I think, like you're talking about a European yes. Championship game, Ireland against the USSR. We're only eight teams to qualify. I think Roddy Whelan all came off his shin, but I think it's the greatest shin. Ireland goal. Of There's all. a shin involved in uh, Nathan Collins' <laughs> goal as well. Yeah, it kind of a, a lucky kind of bounce back off, and didn't it? Uh, Westmeath two six awfully one one in that Charlton Cup semi final, so an eight point lead for Westmeath at Croke Park. Cavan are already in the final. Where do you stand on the greatest goal? Are you in the Nathan Collins camp already? Shane, are you high on life after what you saw the other day? Yeah, I know. Look, John, you, you, I would probably broadly agree with your argument. You do have to put context into it. On, on, if you were just to look at the actual goals and remove the context from it, I, I think that we saw two of the three best Irish goals. Look, I'm 40 now at this stage. I, I saw two of the three best goals I have seen in my 40 years. Uh, and I also, by the way, saw what I, you know, maybe you can find another one for me, but what, to the best of my memory, I have saw the greatest assist for a goal I've ever seen in an Irish jersey. Yeah. I, I would struggle to remember any pass I have ever seen by any Irish player better than the one Obafemi gave for Troy Parrott's goal. I thought it was absolutely outstanding. So, look, not to get carried away, but Nick getting McCarthy's carried away throwing. at the same time. <laughs> it, was bl- it was a blind pass as well, though, Shane, wasn't it? Because he, he couldn't see him. He was right behind him and he, he made this great run. That's so. the eye test, though, again, isn't it? The, the Obafemi, there's something there, the nonchalant the the swagger there's something there yeah, yeah. and he again, pressed I, I was surprised by how much he pressed and there's been a couple of games and I've watched him and he doesn't press up and like you need Ireland need their strikers to be pressing like the way the Ukrainian guys Yarmolenko and a few lads went went after Irish defenders is is what you should be doing and you look at the other side of oh, Femi wasn't too bad at all you know look John it's 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 important it's important with any of these players because they're so so young we can praise them and we can talk about the good stuff that they did. But with youth will come, um, you know, wildly varying uh, display levels, I, I think, wildly varying. And some days, Troy Parrott, Obafemi, Ogbeni, even, even Knight, fellas like that, some days they will walk onto the pitch and they will deliver a 9 or a 10 out of 10 performance for Ireland. But they are absolutely still going to have 5 out of 10 and 6 out of 10 performances for Ireland. So they, the really important thing is that... We're not looking at them and saying, 
well, if he doesn't deliver here today, well, we're in big, big trouble. You know, Troy Parrott has probably done enough to earn the jersey for the next competitive game. But if he's had a bad 45, okay, maybe give him 10 minutes in the second half. If he's had a bad 55 minutes, you don't leave him there for 90. You whip him off and you bring back in a Callum Robinson, who hopefully by that stage will be back in the team where he's playing regularly. A guy who was our best outfield player in 2021. You know, we can't have a goldfish memory here, so we can't. He was outstanding for us in 2021, as badly and all as the, the, the last couple of games went for him. He gets minutes again. He's right back into our thinking. Um, You know, just because Obafemi has emerged doesn't mean that we all forget about Igbon, Igbonne either. He obviously has been brilliant for us. Adam Ida hopefully is to come back into that. You know, that's why I'm saying, again, you, you know, you take it to two eights. At the, t- at the moment, we would probably say Knight and Malumbi look really good as our two eights. But it's very, very important that the likes of Jeff Hendrick does keep pressure on them. That the likes of, I know Alan Brown has almost been reborn as a right wing back. But to me, I, I still see him playing a lot of minutes in the centre of midfield for us. Um, Connor Horan did well when he came on with the limited time that he got the other day. These guys have to still be there pushing for a place so that when a 20 or 21 year old inevitably has the odd bad game that he's going to have Stephen's able to whip him off and replace him with a fella that he believes in that's first, why selection yeah. is so important first team football first team football first team football first team football for your club yeah yeah, yeah with a couple of uh, special cases like if a part's appearing off the bench for Spurs or something like that you'd yeah, yeah. Oh, Kelleher is another example although Bazunu is going to I think I'm pretty confident it's going to nail it. what were you going to say there before that um, it's just about I think everything it comes back like how many five or six out of ten performances during the Euro qualifying campaign can we let the 2021 20, year olds have and still qualify you know that's why Kenny has to has to just nail down his who are his for example uh, okay we'll say we'll just look at it we'll get carried away with Ogbefeni Og- Og- and Parra right and we'll say that's going to be it they're going to have two eights behind them they're going to have the wing backs go get us goals lads and when it doesn't work the joy of bringing Ogbeni on for a certain type of game to muscle him or even turn him into a right wing back which he really doesn't want to happen or bring on Robinson in behind there and bring his energy that he can bring is great but those things need to happen you know what I mean we need to see that happening it did happen against Ukraine in the last game Robinson did come on and probably didn't have the impact that we that the team needed him to I thought that game was screaming out for Ogbeni to come on but again it's selection selection and selection because like, Scotland in Hampden Park in September can bring all of this positive feeling that we have and just turn it on its head. So it's really important and, that the management nail this, you know. And John, and the other point I, I would make is I, I do believe that Stephen does deserve massive, massive credit for that. Because I, I don't believe for a moment that if the previous management were in place or even a, a, a more pragmatic new management had come in, there is no way we would have had the emergence of so, so many of these young players all bursting through at once. And look, it does mean, you know, inconsistency and it does mean, you know, sometimes us, us not getting the right result. But it, it, ha- it is paying dividends. It has paid dividends. And I, I think the strength and depth now and the emergence of so many young players, Stephen has to get take a, a lot of credit for that. But that means also there's no alternative really, isn't there? As in you need to well, go the alternative you know, was you need, sticking. To, you need to stick with Stephen Kenny into the end of this Euros campaign. You, 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 we all need to stop um, oh, without question. freaking uh, out if something goes wrong. And uh, accept. Let me put it this way. If you lose to Armenia in a European qualifier, and let's say you lose the first two games of the Euros qualifiers, and like, let's say it's a situation like I said, Armenia, see, those, this is only Nations League. You're going to lose seeding because of this, and you're going to lose chance of a playoff for the Euros. But let's say they lose 1-0 in Armenia, and then they lose 1-0 one, at home to Ukraine and they start the Euros. Pretty sure that's how Mick McCarthy lost his job in 2002, wasn't it? Yeah, well, no, the Mick McCarthy lost his job in 2002 without <laughs> going over all ground because of Saipan. But let's say, right, okay, we've a, we've a problem with results, right? I'm just being devil's advocate here as well because there is so many positive things, especially the players coming through. But if they were lose the first two games of the Euros, it becomes very, very difficult to defend this management. Yes, uh, but I think the, you ultimately decide on whether, whether you qualify or you don't qualify. So I yeah, think like, I a bit like Trapattoni's second World Cup campaign or you just you splutter to the end. Yeah, and I, and, and I think um, FAI German Roy Barrett's comments in the Sunday Times today are quite interesting going, if there's any more leaks from the board, it's not going. We're not going to get the sponsors we want. And like that, that in itself is a, is a, a massive, vote of confidence. massive vote yeah, of confidence yeah. for Kenny. And uh, we're all in this together, except for a couple of people on the board talking to the Mail and Star. Uh, so allegedly, allegedly, yeah, yeah. But um, so we'll see what happens. You know what I mean? But it, it, yeah, he's in. We're in for the next two years. And Kenny even said that himself. You know, his contract hasn't even started yet. His new contract. So let's be fun. I think people should have kicked up a fuss about losing that away to Armenia. 
who lost 7-1 in aggregate then to the other opponents in the group, Scotland and Ukraine. And I think we should make a big deal about losing to... I know it was a, a wonderfully emotional night and they were playing off that energy, the Ukrainian team. But it was all their domestic-based players almost, you know. And once the game started and into the second half and the emotion went away, we were back to that place where it was boot and bollock. It was get the ball wide, get the ball into the box for Shane Duffy. If we're still in that position at the start of this Euros campaign... Um, <laughs> we're not going forward and we have to start thinking of really big difficult hard decisions probably after the Euros come in but we still have to start thinking about them you know What about Troy Parrish uh, the next move as it were Shane Keegan for him Yeah look obviously we've got skin in the game here <laughs> John been, been Spurs fans I would I would love Troy Parrish to emerge as as a real option for Spurs Um do I think it, it is likely to happen in 2022-23 season? Uh, probably not. Probably not, which is is why I, I would be leaning on towards a, another loan move. Um, I think that's the best place for him to start. Maybe that's reassessed then at halfway through the season. But I'd love for him to go into a side, John, where the manager sees him as a really, really key part maybe of a promotion push out of the championship. Um, again, without a doubt, if he's moving, the first and foremost, most important thing is that it's a manager who intends to give him a huge, huge amount of minutes. I'd take, you know, I'd take a bottom half of the championship team over a top half of the championship team if it meant getting more minutes. But you would like to think at this stage that he's good enough to be going into a top half of the championship side and and you know getting a hell of a lot of minutes and kind of really, really kicking on. He, look, there's no doubt we've all known for a long, long time. I've been at the Kennedy Cup all this week, John. I was at the Kennedy Cup back. back Are you doing that Troy commentary? Were you? No, 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 no. I definitely wasn't. Oh, for the throwing, the throwing commentary. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. I saw that kid, by the way, doing that throw in earlier in the week. He got it absolutely perfect. Of course, it's the one where he messes it up that goes viral on the poor young fella. But um, no, Troy. I remember trying to at the Kennedy Cup a few years ago. I don't think I'd ever heard so much hype over one player at a, at a Kennedy Cup, and he delivered on every bit of that. He was amazing, and he's been kind of destined for stardom since then and there's no doubt that it uh it leveled off there for a long time and i think there were real real concerns if he was you know if he was ever going to fulfill it but i i think he's kicked on again i think he's got so much star quality he's such an intelligent footballer um and he's look he's he's he, fingers crossed all things going right he's going to be a huge huge player for us for for the next few seasons but again it's just important that we don't burden him with too much too soon but Minutes again, John, you know, decent championship side. That's where I'd, I'd like to see him for the next while. Yeah, it's funny, these Premier League clubs really don't suit Irish players at the moment. Um, Matt Doherty aside, Bazunu aside, um, especially a striker, you know, especially a fragile striker, which I don't think Parrot is if, as Shane says, he gets to the right club. But it's a global league. It's, I think it's just so competitive. It's just so hard for anybody to to break in. Like we're talking, John. About... I don't. I don't think. I don't think Matt Doherty would be the starting right wing back for Spurs at the beginning of the next season. Do you? The Brazilian Emerson. I think. I. I think we'll sign. I think I can see a signing in in that in that position. I don't think. I don't think Conte has been happy with either of his options at right wing back or left wing back. To be honest with you. Um, I, I don't know, obviously, you know what the contract situation of everybody is there, but I, I would say if he thought he could offload um, one of his right wing backs and one of his left wing backs and replace them with two new players, he, he would do that very quickly. Yeah, there is a, a little bit of a worry about that um, from a Matt Hardy perspective. I, I'm not so sure. But then again, as Dan was pointing out yesterday, I think you know with Spurs being the Champions League, there's a huge squad, uh, importance of having a big squad uh, for these um, all these games are going to be playing. So I take part playing Caribou Cup. All day, all day long next season. Rather you know. than moving, I just, it worked for Keller this year. It took him on leaps and bounds, you know. Uh, we got to take a break. We'll talk about Gavin Bazudu and Creven Keller uh, after the break with Gavin Comiskey of the Irish Times and uh, uh, our um, Shane Keegan from uh, the world of football. I always call you, call you UEFA Pro Licence Coach Shane. I don't know if that's the right thing to call you. Is that the right thing to call you? I've only been calling you that for the last two years. I much prefer that one to the whole ex Dundalk manager one, which is definitely way off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even though you didn't meet Mikel Mark Mark Arteta on the sideline. Okay, five three one zero six, folks, for your text messaging uh, on any soccer matter. Um, I'll go in with this one from Michael. Are you joking? Kenny's gone out of four competitions in eighteen months. No matter how many players he brings through. Back after this. Football on off the ball with Sky. All the football you love in one place across Sky Sports, BT Sport, and. Premier Sports. Alive and kicking with Claire McKenna. 
This week on the Alive and Kicking podcast, how feeling tired all the time could be a sign of hemochromatosis. It's estimated there are at least 20,000 undiagnosed cases in Ireland. Find out what it is and what to do about it. And Roxy Nafusi is certainly the lady of the moment in wellness. She'll be joining me to talk about her best-selling book and movement manifest. Alive and Kicking with Yakult. Catch the Alive and Kicking podcast at Newstalk.com or on the Newstalk app powered by Go Loud. Every bumpy road, every bit of weather, every school run, every moment of reflection, every... It's rush hour on a Friday. What did you expect? Little disagreement, every tight squeeze, everything about a Skoda is made for Ireland. Welcome back to Checkout Line, where the new Lidl beef campaign is causing a bit of a stir. You were saying there, Cheese. Oh, well, Brad, Beef says he's got all these blasting hair and awards. But we've all won awards, like. There's no need to go on about this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Strawberry. He says he's quite fresh, like, but I'm a Lidl strawberry. Like, come on. Uh, Turnip, what did you have to say? Come down with all the award over there, and I come down, and then up again, and they're done again yet in the morning. Yeah, yeah, you're joking me. He did what? Everyone loves Lidl beef. Well, almost everyone. Lidl. More for you. It's show my van Hi, I'm Ken Doherty. For all van drivers and business owners, insuremyvan.ie is Ireland's low-cost van and commercial insurance specialist. For high-quality van and all commercial insurances, call insuremyvan.ie. City Financial Marketing Group Limited trading as insuremyvan.ie is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Guaranteed Irish business members continue to sustain jobs and communities across Ireland. For over 50 years, DID Electrical continues to deliver, install and demonstrate the latest home appliances and technology to local communities with a commitment to providing superior service at guaranteed low prices. 100% Irish owned, DID Electrical has a dedicated team of 400 people across 23 stores and online at did.ie. So look out for the G. GuaranteedIrish.ie altogether better. Summer Ready Gardens start with great offers at Woody's. Cook up a storm with 25% of all Phoenix barbecues and pizza ovens. Dine al fresco with the Monaco 7-piece patio set. Now 249 euro, save 50 euro. And have your garden looking its best with the Prolon 42 centimeter petrol mower. Now 229 euro, save 50 euro. And Cupernol Ducks Back, 9 litres for the price of 5. Shop in-store, online or click and collect. Woody's, we're all homemakers. T's and C's and exclusion supply. It's over. Go, don't look back. Go get your life back on track. Though there's hurt, though there's pain. This car can't compete with the train. Oh. I'll drop you away. I wasted your time. You call me, we come to the end of the line. Break up with your car. Love 20% off fares with Erin Road Aaron. Part of the Transport for Ireland network. Football on Off the Ball. With Sky. All the football you love in one place. Across Sky Sports, BT Sport, and Premier Sports. And you're welcome back to Off the Ball here on News Talk for your Sunday afternoon. John Duggan with you on the football hour until five. We're on air in total until seven o'clock. Now, Gavin Comiskey, the Irish Times football correspondent, and Shane Keegan, the UEFA Pro Licence coach, joining us today. Remember our football coverage on Off the Ball. All thanks to Sky, proud partner of our women's national football team, out believe together, and we can go everywhere. So, Gavin Bazuna going to Southampton. Um, I think he is the number one. I think it's pretty clear, despite Kelleher, uh, Gavin playing in the four games, that Bazuna is going to be the number one. Yeah, I think Kelleher's two saves against Ukraine in the first half, the last game there, I think that put him in a, a strong position to, uh, to be like a, a genuine contender or competitor. Um, it's terrible again going back to being in Yerevan I was watching Bazunu, Keller and Travers warm up behind the goal and you're like three Premier League goalkeepers yeah. you know? it's just such a pain it would, be, it would happen to us that arguably these guys are going to turn into our three best players over the next ten years but such is life yeah Bazunu, great news for Sean McRovers great news for uh, everyone who was even like Ashford College's old school was tweeting about it this week about the move and um, the, it really does the money does flow downhill from this it's as it should it's a great example of uh, arguably a benchmark of how like League of Ireland clubs can negotiate for their footballers in the Massively, coming years. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But I, I don't personally, just from 
even just going back to the saves, his form for Portsmouth, but his saves for his, that save against Luxembourg that night in Dublin against Serbia, when we uh, we drew, but really should, should have lost six two. You know, uh, he was fantastic. Kelleher, I, I I think he was at fault for uh, the uh, Ukraine goal when they lost one 0 in Dublin. He, uh, Kenny vehemently defended him afterwards and said no, it was blocked and all that. Like a small little mark against him there, I think. But next season you have. I think Bazunu, just looking at um, the guys up against, I think he'll start for Southampton in the Premier League. I think Travers will start for Bournemouth in the Premier League. And I think Keller will play Caribou Cup again. So by come September, it'll be a, a no-brainer in that sense, you know, unless Bazunu gets injured or if that back problem is real, is long-term. But again, I don't think it is. Otherwise, Southampton wouldn't have paid the money that they've paid. Half-time Westmeath 2-11, Offaly 1-6 in the Talton Cup semi-final. Already Cavan are through. Does this mean there uh, is now more pressure on Cueving Kelleher uh, Shane Keegan to get a move yeah it, it's hard to know what he does from here really um, like he has to have been quite happy with how last season played out for him um, but there's no guarantees that staying where he is would see this season play out in a similar vein like to obviously start in, in a cup final and, and, and win it and be involved in the penalty shootout and, and look as good as he did everything went just about as well as it could do for a guy who's not a starting goalkeeper, if that makes sense. Um, and I'm just not 100% sure if it could all work out quite as nicely for him again um, for the coming season by staying there. But he's met himself. The thing is, John, he's now met himself so important there at Liverpool that I don't think they would be in any way open to the idea of him leaving. So I think he's he's just going to have to, to grin and bear it. I think that will be his role again. Um, you know... <laughs> He did, I think he did reasonably well over the four. I would probably agree with Gavin. He certainly, I think, could have done better for the goal at times for a guy who is kind of known for being comfortable with his feet. I thought his distribution actually could have been a bit better um, on occasions over the course of, of the four games. Um, but he is he is a super goalkeeper. His 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 problem, obviously, is that we seem to have an, an absolutely generational talent in in Gavin Bazuna, I mean, he was the outstanding player for us in, in 2021 and barring Creeping Kelleher literally got man of the match in four consecutive games. For me, it was, you know, once Bazuna comes back in his fit, he will he will absolutely be the starting goalkeeper and fingers crossed things work out wonderfully for him. As Gavin says, look, you look at Southampton last year and the fact that the two keepers pretty much split the minutes between them over the course of the Premier League season, that's that's not a good thing for a manager. He wants somebody to step forward and, and, and be his starting keeper week in, week out. And I think Bazuna can do that. I remember our coverage of football and off the ball brought to you by Sky. All the football you love in one place across Sky Sports, BT Sport and Premier Sports. Uh, Gavin Comiskey and Shane Keegan speaking about the national team. Uh, it's funny that Nathan Collins arrived in this window. Uh, he'd only had a handful of caps before that. Who are the next players that are going to make an impact? Is it Will Smallbone? Is it Daryl Lenehan? Is it Jason Malumbi getting more of a run and getting more stability in terms of his progression in an international jersey? Where where do we see the the, 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 the next players that we're going to be talking about in the European campaign and, the, and the, maybe even in September? Wouldn't it be perfect if it was Evan Ferguson? If he burst into the Brighton team, 17-year-old playing and doing the 21s. I really liked his performance against Italy. I think he ran himself into the ground, but he was quite sensible. That wasn't evident when he was 16 playing for the 21s yeah. I think, think he's taken a leap um, again that's heaping, like, like heaping pressure on Parrot when he's 17 I'm heaping pressure on Evan Ferguson to big, strong good at his feet if he can just get onto the Brighton bench and get a couple of minutes that'd be a huge positive but you never know you're right Smallbone could Connor Noss could burst through in the Bundesliga um, I really like Coventry at under 21 level um, I know they got the, I think the keeper was injured but I know it was a bit of a disaster in Italy and Ascoli to but they're going to a playoff now. I can see us having a debate about whether a couple of these guys get brought up to the senior team or left for the Euro playoff, in, um, which I think is September, which I think might yeah. clash with the Nations League window. That's a great debate to be having. It is, um, yeah. Smallbone, uh, yeah, I'd love to hear Shane's opinion on him. He, he was so good. He's so neat and tidy. Um, but I feel like Nas might be the guy who comes true if, if, again, if what he does for 21s and if he can replicate that at club level. Yeah, games going on the game so far. Obviously, small one has been the the one that has uh, one has stood out. Certainly, he's been very very neat and tidy and very extremely extremely versatile. Lads, he he, 
you know, he's he can basically play advanced midfield or sit midfield if if played centrally, or seems quite happy to be fielded out wide and been allowed to drift inside and roam around in there as well. So he's done very well. Um, again, Gavin and Witch on on Coventry, I think he's he's been very very good, and I think his club form um, over the second half of the season was was absolutely excellent as well. It's it's yeah, it's likely to come from from fellas like that. You would. The one place where you would love to see somebody burst through, John, is probably left back. Um, you know, you look at, at at James McLean's age profile now, you look at Enda Stevens, you'd like to think that is it might you know, not be you Ryan Manning through. at the moment. Well yeah, Ryan, yeah, Ryan Manning it's... couldn't get on the bench in the four windows mm. there. I think Enda Stevens also came off a pretty tough season and deserves another chance, as in he just didn't he was nowhere near the form we expect of him when we've seen him in previous times. Maybe left. Well, he did have an injury earlier in the season. Yeah, I, I think he. I think he definitely deserves another run. But yeah, completely right. Uh, left wing yeah. back is key. On, on the Nathan Collins one, uh, John, I was actually just looking at my phone during the ad break. There, Neil, Neil O'Riordan is actually reporting at the moment that Burnley have made two or three attempts to sign Luke McNally. Luke was Luke was previously at St Pat's and Drogheda here in the league before moving across to Oxford, and he had a fantastic season at Oxford. But Neil O'Riordan is reporting that that Burnley are set to make another uh, attempt to get Luke McNally in, and that that would then pave the way for them to accept a bid for Nathan Collins if they were happy with a, a, a bid that did come in. So that's that's an interesting enough situation from developing there. Anybody uh, uh, we know where? From? No, no, I don't I don't think I just barely got a look at the headline of it to be honest with you. I haven't had a chance to flick down through it yet to see if Neil is suggesting where he, he may go. But um yeah, it would be very, very interesting to see if if uh if if there was somebody who would come in because I mean he has to absolutely has to have caught the eye of of, of a lot of big clubs over his, with with his recent form. That goal alone will spike some interest from people. You know? And not even the goal, Shane. The the, uh, the cushion headers, the positional stuff. Um, that's why I'm, I'm not trying to get rid of Shane Duffy. There's a huge value in the man, but that's why mm. him in the centre of the three seems so important for Ireland in the next while. Oh, well, Gavin, if 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 he had if he even if, if you removed the goal he scored, he still would have got man the match the other night. No doubt, like he was yeah. the best player on the field aside from the goal, wasn't he? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Lily Ag has just scored for Ireland against the Philippines in their women's national team game. This is the kind of the the prepar- preparatory game for the Georgia match, the World Cup qualifier that's coming up in a in a. In a Philippines week, so. have already qualified for the World Cup. Yeah, so that's what's going on there. Um, just in terms of the. Transfers in the market, Shane Keegan. Uh, it, it's funny, um, Sadio Mane leaving Liverpool. Like you know, he was such an emotional, uh, you know, focal point for Liverpool fans in that you know Fab Three going forward. Uh, Salah, Mane, and Firmino, and he's now leaving. And Darwin Nunes has come in, and Erling Haaland has joined Manchester City. Are we maybe seeing a, a different complexion of the way these teams are going to play? A little bit less um, pressing and passing, and a bit more direct with number nines. Um. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'd find it hard to see Klopp departing too far from from his beliefs. To be honest with you, he's very definite in how he wants his his side to go about things. Um, look, Diaz was has been superb for Liverpool since he he came in, but Mane's departure is a big. It is a big blow, John. Like you know, Liverpool fans. I'm not saying they don't see it as a blow, but I suppose because Diaz was so impressive, because Nunes has arrived in. I think they're kind of all saying, you know, they're kind of all of the opinion, well, you know, it's fine, it's fine. He, he has been excellent for us, but it's fine. We're, we're kind of covered in that area. You know, I think it's the departure of, of one of the Premier League's very best players. He's been exceptional um, and he's been a huge, huge part of what Liverpool have, have done. Um, I mean, the season just finished. Only, only, only Trent and, and Van Dijk finished the season with more minutes than him. So from, you know, from the midfield up, he was... You know, Klopp's go-to man. He was the most used player in that Liverpool side, um, and I think there is, you know, I, I think his loss could be felt as as the season goes along because he was a a terrific player. He, he just ticked every box. He was he was fantastic for them. Um, look, in terms of the Haaland signing, it's you know I don't know how good it is for the for the competition level of the Premier League. It's he is exactly what they were missing, John. He is absolutely exactly what they were missing. You can, you know, Pep can have all his beliefs in in the false nine, and right, it might mean it might mean their possession stats now drop from you know eighty percent to seventy five percent because they're not absolutely monopolising the ball in the middle of the field. But they've also probably signed a fella that I I find it extremely hard to see how Haaland doesn't go and score 
30 goals there thereabouts in the Premier League next season and I think uh, I think Liverpool or anybody will do very very well to hang on to their on to their coat tails on the back of that signing I think one of the things as well he's going to get a six week break for the World Cup because Norway haven't qualified oh yeah so that's uh, another thing that's in Haaland's favour 10 goals in six weeks yeah. well that's it and it's funny like the back of the pages today uh, the Richard Arnold the Man United CEO having pints with fans trying to placate the criticism so um, that's where Man United have got to in terms of will they get Frankie de Jong I think Frankie de Jong is going to be the back pages of every paper now for the next month he, he's, a, he's a fantastic player John he, he really really is a fantastic player and you know United need a hell of a lot of signings for, in my opinion to try and, and turn them even back into a Champions League qualifier, uh, qualifying position contender never mind challenging to win a Premier League title but he would be a big step forward. He would certainly be a big step forward in terms of, of centre midfield players. I, I think he's right up there in terms of, of one of the very, very best in the world. He's just, he's one of these fellas again with who plays with wing mirrors. He knows where every player on the field is at, at every moment of the of the game. And I, I love watching him. I think he's, his football IQ is absolutely through the roof. Um, I, would, I, I would be surprised. I, I would have thought... Frankie De Jong would have, you know, I know United fans love me for hearing to say this, but more appealing options than Manchester United. Really, all I mean by that is, I mean Frankie De Jong not playing in the Premier, or sorry, in the Champions League to me would be crazy. I mean he's he's an outstanding player, and I can only imagine that the the wages on offer would have to be absolutely colossal for him to agree to to step away from Champions League football for a season. Interesting. Uh, we got a text here, 53106. Uh, you're letting yourselves down today, lads. Collins did not score the greatest Irish goal ever. Parrish is not a generational player, and Josh Cullen is not the best Irish midfielder since Roy Keane. So, cop yourselves on. <laughs> this is one of our texts on 53106. Oh, we're just going to be negative all, the way, all day long. Yeah, as a dog. As an offered any alternatives, he's just telling us we're, we're wrong. Well, I we did say Ronnie Whelan was the best. Um, it's interesting, Gavin. The Nations League, I think, we're asking if the Talton Cup a success, and I think it has been a success. The Nations League is far better than friendlies. Look, even Gareth Southgate now, England are back into the crisis stage and uh, the impossible job, and it's all going to go wrong, and they're not going to get to the World Cup final, and they're not going to win the World Cup, and Gareth Southgate will be sacked probably before the World Cup. Yeah, their peak is their peak is gone. Yeah, yeah, well, the media are certainly treating it like it's qualifiers and European championships, and and that's what it kind of felt like. Um, it felt nothing like friendlies being at any of these games, right? Uh, obviously, but it's still not as important, and you you do have to take it into a bit of context where that's been a good thing for Kenny's management is that uh, four points from four games is not something that's going to be uh, that's going to follow him around as long no. as they get their act together in September and roll into it as a draw. I think it's October sixth in Frankfurt for the Euros. Um, so everything kind of pa- it it's it's brilliant what is happening is what I'm saying and it feels way more important than a friendly when it's happening but yeah we can all move past it quite quickly as well at the same time and and we will as we did in that first campaign that awful campaign during COVID just to finish Shane Keegan Eve Basuma Spurs Conte Perisic look I don't think he's going to be there in five years time Conte but he's doing everything he can now to make Spurs a, a credible team next year. He is, John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He certainly is. I mean, when you look back to there was moments there last season when when I was expecting him to to uh, to walk. To be honest with you, um, and he's he's kind of brought it right around back around from the brink there. And obviously, we we had as far as had a fantastic finish to the season, and it's 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 brilliant to to, to have Champions League football back again. It really, really is. Um, yeah, I think the signings are important. I think if you go through the team, we've, we, he's done really, really well in terms of the two Juventus lads. They they come in and they they really were a breath of fresh air to the side. They really, really were. Um, you know, Kane hopefully a bit more settled heading into the start of of the new season means we'll we'll have him firing back on all cylinders again. Uh, Romero was a brilliant sign, and I'm sure you'll agree at the back he was really, really terrific when he when he came into the side. As I say, question marks probably over the wing backs. Um, Larice getting on in years, yeah. although he probably had a bit of a bounce back season. Uh, the se- previous season, I would have had more question marks over him. But uh, no, look, they're moving in the right direction. I don't think they'll be anywhere next or near the likes of a Man City, really, to be honest. But um, moving in the right direction under a, who, a man who is a brilliant manager, no doubt. Shane Keegan, UEFA Pro Licence Coach, thanks so much for joining us uh, on Off the Ball this afternoon. Cheers, JD. Gavin Comiskey, Irish Times. Thanks so much, Gavin, coming in. Thanks for having us.
Gavin Comiskey and Shane Keegan there on the football hour great chat as always to the lads thanks so much to them we're going to preview the final round of the US Open after the news just to let you know in the Charlton Cup semi-final it is Westmeath 2-13 Offaly 1-6 so a 10 point lead for the Lake County 37 minutes into the game and the winners will play Cavan in the final stay with us we're on air till 7 this evening on Off the Ball we're back after the news Football on Off The Ball With Sky All the football you love in one place Across Sky Sports, BT Sport and Premier Sports